God is says a keeper of his word. His word. Yeah. God is a keeper yes, of his word.
Hallelujah. Yes, At this time, we're going to have words of expression and encourage us. And we are going to have them in this order. First, we have Evangelist Dorothy Crompton, uh, Prophetess Godwin's mother, uh, followed by uh, Robert Godwin Sr., My dad. which is uh, <laughs> Prophetess Godwin's <laughs> father. And then uh, we will be, she will, they, he will be followed by uh, Cherise Sykes, who is a co worker and a friend. Amen. Amen. So, in that order. I don't know what to say. But I'm going to speak of my heart. Yeah. And I thank God for being here. Thank God for being saved today. And I thank God that I'm blood washed and blood bought. I thank God for being such a, a healer in my life. And I'm learning that I've learned to trust God each and every day. Amen. And when things happen, I sometimes I, uh, I have a alert button. Sometimes that. Uh, someone said, push it. And I said, no, I've got to give God a try. And when I give God a try, sometimes it'll happen right then and there. Yeah. But I thank God for my daughter who has stepped out on faith yeah. and stepped out to do a work for the Lord. Debbie's always been a very strange child. She used to look <laughs> she was a little, little child. She used to scare my kids <laughs> because she would see things. Yes. Yes. She would see things when she was a little bitty child. She would say, Mama, uh, that man just went upstairs and my kids would be so scared because she would see things and they would be afraid of it. And um, she always loved the word. That's what I like about Daddy. She used to stand up when I would tell her to go to bed. She would stand up uh, in the window and put her Bible in the window and read by the street light. Yes. You remember that, Debbie? I don't. Yeah, she, used to, she would read by the street light and she was supposed to have been in bed for school. But she would stand up and take her Bible and read by the stand up and read by the street light in the in the room. And I thank God for her. But I thank God that she stepped out on God's word. And I thank God that I've called Debbie many times to pray for me. I thank God. First, I honor, um, excuse me, Apostle Griffin. He too has spoken a lot of things in my life. Amen. Uh, he, <laughs> I think he's gonna be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and I thank God for him. Thank God for all of you know our family that came out today, and all the saints that decided to come out and, and, and you know and help us celebrate the, the founding of. Uh, Repair of the Breach Ministry of Hope International. And I thank God for that. And I thank God Debbie always uh, had her word. She always calls me lady. <laughs> Debbie always calls me mama. <laughs> she always has called me lady. <laughs> you know. And I, I, to me, I used to say, why Debbie calls me lady? But I think that's a compliment to me. <laughs> you know, and uh, she's, uh, I thank God that Debbie would uh, pray. You know, sometimes they would, we would be together, our family, and they would say, let's have prayer. And the, the Spirit of the Lord would lead me to tell Debbie to pray. Yeah. I was to let Debbie pray, and we would pray, and she would pray. But I thank God for her. And Debbie, I want you to continue. We can't look at what we see, but we have to walk by. This is a faith walk. The first of the year, the Lord said to me, he said, it's about now faith. Yeah. When he said now faith, he's not talking about uh, faith on down the road. Uh, keep on, but it's right now faith. Yeah. If you ask the Lord, and he began to tell me that, and he had told me, he said, I know the way that you take, yes. and when you have been tried, you shall come forth as gold. And I thank God for that. And I'd like to pass it on to Debbie. You know, Debbie always called me Hitler. <laughs> She said they grew up with Hitler with me. <laughs> because I trained my girls to be clean women. I, I trained them to keep their self clean, their house clean. I trained them, you know, they went to church, they had to go to shut-ins with me. When I, we would go to shut-ins from Friday, see then we was 
Sunday from Friday to Sunday morning. I would fill them a blank and I would put them in the back and then they would pray so long and then we would let them go to sleep. But then they would have to go to, go to shut-ins with me and then when I got home, then we had to get up and go to church. And I thank God that I kept my children in church. And sometimes we would be on the bus. I had six children and sometimes we would be on the bus. But we went to church and I remember one Sunday evening, we went to church twice a, twice a day. And they remember the Wild Wild West, because that's the only thing I would ever watch. <laughs> the Wild Wild West. <laughs> that's what they, they, were, they were allowed to watch. And I thank God that me and their father, he remarried, I remarried. I'm from the East Dallas. But that's my best friend. All right. That's, all right. that's my best friend. Besides God, that is my best friend. All right. And we get along, we talk, we tell each other everything. He if he got any problems, he come to me. You know, I if I got any problems, I can call him. Yeah. And I thank God for that. You know, that that's an example. Because I told myself we got six kids. Right. I said, I don't understand people that can break up and then be in this. Right. I taught them, by example, forgiveness. Now that's what I taught them, forgiveness. To forgive, and sometimes they would say, look like, you taught us wrong, mama, you taught us wrong. I said, no, I didn't teach y'all wrong, I said, I taught y'all right. Because people would do things to us, and then they, and I would tell them, you had to forgive them. Because I tell them, they'll tell you, as long as you don't forgive people, you, you, the Bible said, if you don't forgive, then God won't forgive you. Then another thing, if you don't forgive them, you'll always be their prisoner. Right. And I'm not going to be anybody's prisoner. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I thank God for Debbie, and I, Debbie, I thank God for you. Just, like I said, stepping out, doing what the Lord say. And I always tell them, I, I, I passed the more than most of Cecilia, that's my only daughter in law. <laughs> I tell them I preach more than anybody and I'm passed in the pulpit. Because I get calls to start one morning, uh, my sister Cody was, uh, wasn't safe. I had spent the night over the house and Tanya took the video of us. And I had just lost my sister. And I got up, I just lost her on the 12th of the month. And I, and I tell you, we got up and it hit me, the, the song came on, God did it. <laughs> that seems a, that's a song. And, but I thank God for my children and I thank God that they love God. And you know, we're not perfect. We're not a perfect family, but we love God. Yeah. You see, that's the main thing. Yeah. I didn't say we were perfect, but we love God. And that's the main, and they have not forgot their training for coming up in the church. And I thank God for that. So you all pray for daddy. You got a journey ahead of you. <laughs> you got a journey ahead of you. But always remember, these are God's people, not your people. That's what I want all of you to always remember. These are God's people. And I told a young man that when he was going off the pastor, he had... My other daughter to tell me to call, so after I got to minister to him, and I told him, I said, all you do, remember, that these are God's people. They are not your people. These are sheep, and they are not hogs. So when you feed, when you begin to feed, make sure you know you feed sheep in the hog. And give them the truth at all times. Whether they want to hear or whether they don't want to hear. Yeah. Still tell them the yeah. truth. Yeah. Put the truth down them because that's what I had to do. I tell my pastor. If I used to tell him when I was over at AMT, I, I would tell him. He said, you're so hard on your children. Like, you just hard. I told him, if I can't tell my kids the truth, then I can't tell your child the truth. I said, don't use me trying to tell somebody else's children the truth, and I can't even tell my own children the truth. And you know, and I thank God for it. So you all, you continue on in the Lord, and let the Lord bless you real good. Amen.
just met them here and there, and they are just like my sisters. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, but I'm grateful for Facebook because it has allowed me to see all of you all being a part of this wonderful opportunity. Yes. Um, you know, Debbie, this is only the beginning. Yeah. Yes. This is only the beginning. Um, I trust that God um, has blessed you with all that you need. He yeah. has blessed you with all of the help that you will ever need. Mm -hmm. I look so forward to you mm -hmm. saving souls. Mm -hmm. We always talk at work about saving souls. Yeah. We pray at work, yes, and our co-workers know sometimes we, we got to go there. Mm -hmm. We pray at work. We cry together yeah. at work. Yes, we have gotten do. down on the floor and yes, around and thank God for many blessings. And there is no shame no, to yes. Debbie's, to her gift, yes. not just in preaching and teaching, but she has a beautiful voice, just like her sister. Yes. And um, and I'm just grateful. I am yes. very grateful. You know, not often do you meet people, and especially at our age, yes. That's um, true. where you instantly know yes. Yes. that this was God. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. connection with God is not about work. This is something much, yes. much deeper. Yes. You know, I have one best friend that I, um, I've i known since we were like in, at Moses Cleveland, since they were both great. Not often do I um, invite people into my rural world and classify them as a best friend. Right. And I mean, because I've been burned, and I'm sure you all have seen yes. testimony. Amen. You know, we've been hurt, so you got to be careful. you got your guards up, and you're like, hmm. You know, do they want something? Right, Are they right. sincere? Are they loyal? And then outside of that, you got to be careful of your circle and who you allow in your circle. Yes. Yes. And I tell you, God has just blessed me with this woman right here. Yes. And I just want to say that anything that you need, Debbie, anytime, and she knows that. Yes. But I'm saying in front of everyone to hold me accountable, yes. to make sure that, <laughs> that I provide the type of friendship that you have provided me. Aww. You've been nothing less than a blessing. I pray for yes. you. I pray for your family. I've just met some of them, but I always pray for you all. Yes. Um, and I ask that we continue to lift Debbie and her family up in yes. prayer. Yes. Um, as you all know, it's rough out here. Yes. It is yes. not yes. easy. Yes. And as your father said, you have stepped into a journey that will challenge you, will push yeah. you. You know there are things you won't understand, mm -hmm. but, God. but God. You follow God, you do what he tells you to do, and you know he got your back. Yes, all right. So i just like to leave this, um, and I don't mean to get emotional, but um, That's all right. may your life continue to be a shining vessel to all of us yes. as we witness God using you to save souls. The crown of life, James 1 and 12, reads, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast mm -hmm. under trial, mm -hmm. yes. for when he has stood the test, mm -hmm. yes. he will receive the crown of life, yes. which God has promised to those who love him. Yes. Yes. May God continue to bless you. Love you. Love you. It's just a blessing of those words that have already been forth from mom and dad and then from a co-worker amen and she just basically met and it just connected instantly yeah, i mean you know that is god yeah. amen it was 15 we've been the friends for a year now oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow march 2016 i was like that is god <laughs> <laughs> it's still god it's still god I want to say something. When I called her on the phone, and I was talking to her. I just want to add this. And before I got off the phone, I said, I said, can I ask you something? I oh, said, I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, you did forget it. I said, <laughs> I said, are you saying, I could hear God in her voice. I had never met her before. I said, you sound, you have such a sweet spirit. But I did tell her that. And, and that's it. From that moment that I talked to her, I, you can hear God's people. Yeah. You can hear God's people. Yeah. Something about when they talk, yeah. you just hear them. That's yeah. it, man. Yeah. Now for our, <laughs> our next uh, guest will be Lincoln Scott. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, uh, we work together at Heights. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, 
for a number of years, uh, I refer to it as being in Egypt. <laughs> so, because it, 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 you know, how that whole secular thing works. And, uh, so for, I've, I've been there for about 24 years. And then the whole time I've been there, I've never experienced uh, praying at work. And so we were praying outside and, and, and it, I know that it changed the atmosphere because there was a lot of stuff going on on the job, but we all know how that works. And uh, we're in a prayer circle over with Debbie. And I was thinking to myself, well, this girl go in. Very <laughs> <laughs> powerful. Very, very powerful. And uh, I know that uh, things have changed there because of it. And uh, I know that uh, you can feel the resistance from the enemy. But but we know that he is greater than that. And again, yes, we have yes. seen a demonstration yes. of uh, what he has done. So we are the benefactors of Debbie and other people being there. Yes. Uh, and so I know that many of us are very, very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> I am a, uh, a staunch uh, biblical uh, eschatology student. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Uh, I know that all of us are, are cognizant, and, and the young lady mentioned it up here about that he's on his way. Yes. And, and, it's, and the thing that, that really is key is that Debbie is the type of person who is not shameful yes. and talking about him. Yes. And so I am uh, very, very much encouraged that in the midst of all that, that we experienced where we were, that she has no reluctance yes. to talk about him. Yes. And so uh, I'm reminded of, of the, the verse from Isaiah chapter one, chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed my report yes. and to whom is the arm of the Lord to yes. And so I am, again, very, very thankful mm -hmm. that, uh, that people are still standing up. Yes. Uh, when I was sitting in my chair, the spirit was talking to me, was telling that, saying to me uh, that she is a person who is not afraid to do my work. Amen. And so uh, I just want to let you know, dear, that I am thankful that yes. you're there, yes. uh, that you certainly are making a difference well beyond that which you do on the job. Amen. Uh, it, is, it is a pleasure to know that uh, you are available to us, and I thank the Lord for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Cody Bay. Oh, All right. Good morning. You didn't get a hand, so he <laughs> okay, well, well, followed by, followed by, then Brittany was that right? Yep. So, so you have, you know what's up. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thankful to be here and thankful to be at my aunt's launching of her ministry. I just, I'll be brief. I just want to say I'm proud of you. And I've always looked up to you, and not just for what you said, but how you've lived your life. Yeah. My, my, my grandmother, I have some strong women in my family, so <laughs> they don't mind getting you in line. Auntie Debbie does not mind telling you when you were not with your grandma. <laughs> so I just want to say I love you, and I'm proud of you, and we'll be here to support you. Well, I'm the same thing she said. Just <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk. You gotta talk, Courtney. Well, thank you for being there for me and Courtney all the time, yelling at us and teaching us the right way. <laughs> and I'm proud of you and your journey. Amen. Amen. Whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. <laughs> Amen. Whom Debbie loveth, he chastises. Amen. We thank God. So as we're winding down or winding up to uh, what we're going to, we're going to have uh, Proctor's Patricia Woodruff come, and then we will have her introduce the woman of the hour. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege just to stand here and call you friend. Yes. Um, you know, I, I am one, and, and I, I'm not going to make it about me, but I am one who I, I'm not... I don't have that many people in my circle, you know, like like your uh, boss folk. 
you know, we, we've been, you know, people have at this stage in their life, they've gone through maybe 12 cycles of friends, right? And, and, and they're not so entreating. But I have to tell you, when I, Tanya, I, I grew up seeing you guys and knowing you guys, but the connection that I had with Debbie in these last few years, I have to say that God did it. And God did it through Debbie because Debbie's personality is she will come knocking down doors. Come on. <laughs> She will kick it open. If God told her to do it, she's going. And I thank you for your personality. I thank you for the mantle of God on your life. I thank you for breaking through some hard chains with me. And I thank you for being a friend and for being authentic and genuine. There are not too many people that I can call genuine and authentic, but she's one. What you see is what you get with Prophetess Debbie. I thank God for the mantle of God that you carry so heavy on your life. The prophetic, I see it just being sharpened from the time I met you to the time now. It's like the minute you came into agreement that, yes, God, I'll do your will. Yeah. Just the release that's on your life yeah. is beautiful. And the, what I heard for the last few days if I've heard your voice is this is the Lord's doing. Yeah. And it is marvelous in his eyes. It's marvelous in his sight. And this time, I'm not going to preach. I promise you. You know, don't give a prophet as a mic because then. <laughs> but this is one thing. This is one thing that I have to tell you. So I looked the scripture up, and it's in the book of Psalms 118.23. And the Lord said, well, go back a verse. So I went back a verse. And it said, the stone that the builders rejected. Yes. Listen, to, listen, 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 listen. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And I declare my decree this day that God has laid a foundation, a foundation that cannot be broken. And God is the chief cornerstone, Debbie. And hear this. He said your foundation is right. And he erects this building this day. And as you go forth, daughter of the king, I declare and I decree that your building is being erected upright. God said the structure is being built upright because he's the chief cornerstone. And the rejection that you've endured, it was for such a time as this. So I bless you in the name of the Lord. I speak blessings on your path. The Lord God go before you and open up every that need to be open for you. I declare blessings. I declare wealth and prosperity because we know it takes money to do this thing. And I declare and I decree the wealth of God be transferred unto you this day. In Jesus' name, I love you like a sister. I, lo I lost my natural sister. And so it's not too many people that I let close to me. But I have to tell you that she broke, she came breaking down doors and coming through boundaries and I love her like a sister. And thank you for sharing her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I feel a shout moment. Y'all feel good. Oh, Y'all feel God in the life. Who oh, gotta pray? Come on, anybody gotta praise in this place? This is the Lord's doing. And it is beautiful on this side. Come on, stand on your feet. Let's get God to glory. Who gotta pray?
this opportunity. I thank God for Apostle Griffin. I thank God for the man of God that he let me reconnect. I've been knowing Apostle Griffin probably most of my life because we used to, when I belonged to St. Luke Overcoming Apostolic Church of Jesus, we would always go to his anniversary. Yeah. And so every year we would always go. So I, I met him many years ago, but the Lord blessed me to reconnect with him in a personal way. Yeah. And when I tell you, just like Sharice, how you said, God, he connects you to people in your life. And he was definitely the connection that helped me yeah. to push me where I am today. Yeah. Because he's the type of man is when he sees stuff in you, he's not going to let it rest. Right. He's going to push you. He's going to shove you. He's going to say, you know, and I, and I appreciate you. And I want to say before everybody, thank God. I thank God. I appreciate you, Pastor Richmond, so much. Thank God for my parents, my mother, my father being here, and all of my family, everybody that came. I appreciate you all. But I just wanted, I'm up here just to kind of share with you just a little bit of the vision and even in understanding the name. Um, when I was the Lord, I went to PA back in 2014. I ended up going there and working, going there to work for a job. And I remember so vividly, it was July of 2014, I was looking at this young lady on TV and she was telling this story of how when her mother died, how her mother and father were the pastors. And she said she was in the back of the car and she was on the way to the funeral. And she said to God, Lord, what am I going to say to these people? I'm hurting. You know, what am I going to do? And she said how when she got there, how God just began to give her the words. And she just began to literally just preach and teach and how God moved her from the background and to the forefront, she's now the pastor of the church along with her father. But as she was speaking, for some reason in my spirit, I just connected with that transition of where she was going. And I just began to say to God, I said, Lord, I'll go. Yeah. I'll do what you have called me to do. I'll go. I'll preach your word. I'll lead your people. And I thank God that he, I was speaking actually to Apostle Griffin one night. And this was before I left to go to PA. And he said, what's the name of your ministry? And so I, I think we were either typing or something. And I said, LOL. He said, no, I'm serious. He got real serious with me. He said, what is the name of your ministry? And the Lord just, it rolled off my tongue. Yeah. Just like if I said, repair of the breach, ministries of hope. And that was what I said. I added the international part because I truly believe the ministry that I have will take me international. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. I believe what I have in my mouth and what God has given me to do is going to take me there. And so when you think about the word preach, that means there has been a break. Yeah. 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 There's been a break. There has been a separation between God and man. Yeah. And so he has put such a, a passion in my heart for people being delivered, for people being set free, and most of all, for people being able to know who he is. Yeah. Because so many people in this world, they go in and out of a church building and they know the pastor, they know the first lady, they know their sister or their brother, but they don't have a true relationship with their God. Amen. And so my job is to, to, to repair yeah. that breach, yeah. to, to bring, to, to, to repair that break yeah. and to bring God's people back to him and to show them and the thing that I I, 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 when I say I hunger and I thirst is for to God's people to be able to be free. Yes, yes. Free in their mind, free in their heart, free in their soul to the point that they will know who their God is. That's my brother. Yeah. Um, they will know who their God is. And so what some of the things that God, I, I want to just read to you some of the things that I wrote down. And this is just a few things that I just want to share with you. I, I, I write all the time, but the vision of the ministry, I said, totally allowing God to lead and guide me as it pertains to everything. That, I mean everything. I don't want anything that I do to be about me or my knowledge, but about everything I want to pray. And then I had in my notes, I said, pray always at home, at church, in business, in outreach centers. And that's another part that the Lord has given me in my ministry. I want to 
erect and start an outreach ministry for youth. In addition to that, will be attached to the ministry. And that's why I know that God going to give me a whole lot of money because I got big dreams. I'm telling you. I, he going to give me. I'm telling you, he going to give me a whole lot of money. And I, I'll tell you, two times the Lord even said this to me. I was living in Niagara Falls. It was 2007. And I was praying. And I just began to prophesy to myself. How many prophets know that God will use your own mouth to prophesy to you? And I began to say, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be filthy rich. I am going to be rich. I'm going to, and I just kept saying that. And then about a month ago, I went to Calvary, my sister's church. And one of the ladies, I was getting, getting ready to leave. And she said, you, you come here. Come here. She said, come here. She said, she ain't never saw me a day in her life. She looked at me. She said, I saw you and she said, I saw so much money just around you all. You just, it was loads of money around you. And so God ain't going to give you no money. First of all, he's going to give it to you because he knows you're going to do the right thing with it. That's number one. And God knows I am a person and anybody in this room that knows me. I am a giver. I love pouring into God's people. And he knows I'm going to do the right thing with it. So y'all look out because I'm going to have plenty of money. And not just for me. I'm going to have plenty for the kingdom. And so one of the things that I was thinking about today that I want the ministry to be like, I want the ministry to be self-sustaining, meaning that we won't be looking on the outside, but the ministry will be sustained from within. If there is a need that we can take care of the need from within the ministry, that we will have sufficiency. I thought about things like having food cards. Well, people don't have to. You don't have to come and tell me all your business. If you need some food, okay, let's, let's get you a food card. It's done. You know, those are the kind of things that God has given me. He's given me, he taught me, some of the things he taught me where he said, teaching God's people to pay their tithe and to offer him a gift of what they have. People don't understand part of living and being a Christian is giving. And it's, it's monetary and it's of your time. It's of everything you have, the type of everything you have. And one of the most important things that I can teach anybody anything, the reason that I have survived as long as I have and I have stood the test of storm is because I pray. Prayer is your, when I say it's your lifeline, it's your lifeline. Prayer is the only thing that, um, that will keep you. And I said, my primary mission will be to point people back to God. Always. Always. Point people back to God. It is Him. Back to God. Teach them that God is their source. That's what God is your source. Your job is not your source. We may believe that it is if you don't go to work. But I was actually sharing with Prophetess Patricia the many times that I have been out of work in the last few years, and that was even a part of my process, I got my hair done and bought more clothes when I was unemployed than when I was employed. I promise you I did. I'm not lying. I, I bought, my mama will tell you. She, but to, to tell my mother will tell you. I did. I bought more clothes and, more, and I didn't have a job. I was getting unemployment. And it came to a time where I didn't even have that, that got cut off. Because you know once you got out, they stopped giving the extension. But just understand and know that God is your source. He is your source. Teach them by example to love and respect yourself. A lot of people, they feel like they can love everybody. But me personally, and I believe it's true. If you don't, and what I mean by that is... If you can't love yourself, how is it possibly? Now, God made you. He said, he, we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. That's what, he, that's what he says about you. So if you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you are made in the image of God, then you are somebody. You are, you are, you are somebody in God. And, I, and that, that's my desire is to teach people to love themselves and to cultivate God, the gift that is within everybody. I am not one. Matter of fact, I'll just share this with you. In my mind, one, as, as we grow, I visualize having five praise and worship teams. All right. 
not just one. I mean, and alternating Sunday, so everybody can be used. You know, because sometimes that's what causes jealousy. There are people sitting up in the church that have a gift, and they can sing, and they want to be able to, and, and they can. He, they, can, they can't be used because these select set of people, every Sunday, five Sundays a week, get to you, and they don't get the chance to use. So that's what those are the kind of things that the Lord put in my mind to be able to do. Uh, yeah, five, one for every week. We alternate, so everybody get a chance. You got a gift, you can sing. If you you want to play that, you know, we're gonna have a music director and all that stuff. But we gonna we want to grow the ministry and that man so that all God's people can be used. Another thing is important: always walk and operate in a spirit of excellence in everything that pertains to God. Everything, everything. And also, every room, this is, these are like kind of little special things that I have. Every room in God's house will be built and designed with exceptional beauty, including the restrooms. All right. Because <laughs> most folks, when you think about the restroom, they just omit those. They don't even think about those. And you may not think that's a, a big thing, but it's, it's a big thing. When people have to go, and it, that's personal. Exceptional. This is God's house. He said, you live in your sealed houses and you let my house just go. God's house ought to be beautiful. I already said, love God, love his people, love strangers, love the wayward child, love everybody. And then, through and by God be a driving force by example of what God desires for his people. Be an example. That's what's important because and and I don't want to I want and I will be this type of pastor by the grace of God. I want to be the type of pastor. When I think about Jesus, he was he was touchable. He wasn't, he never was he ate with sinners, he ate with fornicators. He ate, he sat down, they be looking for Jesus. Where Jesus? Oh, he over there with, with the with the hoe. I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes, you know, we, we get we forget that it's God that brought us there. It's God. Any anything that I am or will ever be will, will is all because of him. It's not because of anything. It's not even because I have been so good because if he had to choose me based upon how I live, I would not be eligible to stand up here today. I wouldn't be eligible, but I'm so glad. And, and the thing that I want to teach God's people in addition to that is the Bible says, I can do all things. All things through Christ who strengthens me. He said, with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So I want, I want his people to get that in their mind that as long as we place him first, as long as we always honor him in all that we do and say, you will always, you can succeed, you will succeed. Love God. Love him. And one more thing. One more thing. Souls will always trump everything. Amen. Souls. My former pastor used to say the goal is souls. Mm -hmm. Pastor Dobbs used to say that all the time. We can do a lot of things. But if people aren't being saved, Amen. set free, and delivered, then why are we coming in the building? Right. What's the purpose? Right. We don't come. See, sometimes as saints, we can get so used to coming in the house of the God, and as long as we can speak in tongues, as long as we can dance, as long as we can sing, we think we've had church. But no, the Bible says, heaven rejoices over one soul that repented than 99 just people. Heaven's rejoicing. So if we can come in the building and somebody gets delivered and set free, then we have accomplished a lot. You know, that's what it's about. The goal is so. It's not, it's not about anything else. And so, I thought I was done. That's all right. It's not all right.
It says, I, so one of my notes says, teach God's people to seek and receive deliverance and stay delivered. A lot of times, people come in and out of the house of God and they don't know how to maintain their deliverance. They come in, God will touch them, and sometimes they go back to the same environment or the same things that they come out of, so they don't stay delivered. But God is God has taught me in my walk. I have made many mistakes. I've failed God many times. But there comes a time in your life where God will you grow up. You learn how to live the life. You learn how to uh, to shun, as the Bible says, the very appearance of evil. If it looked like sin. <laughs> I, I can't do it. And I thank God that he has given me such a made-up mind. Yes. And I thank God that I love him. And, and my passion is his people. Yes. I love God's people. That's my passion. Yes. I love God. And I believe as a, as a as a leader of any kind, you have to have be loved, have a love for the people of God. Yes. You cannot be a selfish person. And lead God's people. It's not about me anyway. And and, and me, see, I, I'm a I'm a dreamer, not just a dreamer. The other vision I had today, or it was yesterday, I was thinking, I'll say, Lord, now when we get ready to celebrate the year, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay for everybody else to have dinner for them and invite them to my house or something instead of you know how like change things around because a lot of times it's always about the preacher. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't honor you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I just want to, I believe that God through, through the ministry with me and under EFMI, that he is ushering in new, something different. And so I don't want anybody, if you're looking for a box from me, forget about it because it ain't no box here. Whatever God says we're going to do, we're going to preach the word, we're going to teach the word, we're going to do the word. But there will be no box, no box, no boxes. Because God is a God of freedom. Yes. And, he, and he will lead and direct. And I will receive instruction from everybody that I need to. Right. But I'm the, the, the first voice I'm always going to hear is God's. Right. All right. You all pray for me. I'm done. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on. Let's put your hands together. Let's say everybody to stand on your feet. Amen. And applaud this woman of God. Amen. That is getting ready to start a new phase in her journey. And at this time, we'd like for you to receive Apostle Martin Griffin. Amen. Give the Lord praise everybody. Clap your hands, amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Give the Lord for his service. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to preach. So, you know, just in case. Just in case somebody has them, like, oh, he's going to preach now. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Amen. We, we thank the Lord, amen, for this awesome occasion. Yeah, man. This is awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. And you know what? You, and, you, and you know the first and you know the first thing that uh, impresses me? But the first thing that impresses me is you. Yeah. Being here to support her. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's, that's vitally important. Support and encouragement. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And so uh, we thank the Lord, amen, for uh, you, yes, Prophets Godwin, and, yes. and uh, this time, amen, that uh, has been set aside, amen, to launch yes. a ministry. Now, <clears throat> thank you, God, religiously speaking, uh, what we're used to is we're used to having a uh, pastoral installation. Yes. Right? right. Yes. So uh, maybe that'll come. But today is a notification, right, yes. amen, in the, uh, in the earth realm, yes. in the spiritual realm, yes. and in hell. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That God has released his servant. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, now, you believe, believe it or not, believe, believe it or not, Elizabeth, you know, there, there is that... Uh, there is that pull to want to preach, you know. But um, uh, I just have some I have some words to say, and then we want to anoint her. Yes. 
even it, it even came to me uh, earlier, even uh, even also besides the ones to come uh, to lay hands, is to even allow Elizabeth, you know, to come because of the international part. Yeah. The international yeah. amen. Um, um, oil. Amen. Come on, somebody say right. international oil. Yeah. Not, not giant eagle oil, international oil. Come on, come on, come on. We're in, we're in. We're in. Uh, one of my, one of the um, one of the most fantastic scriptures in the Bible to me is in the Book of Acts, um, where you know the uh, seven, the seven sons of Siva, you know Jesus, I know, you know Paul, I know, you know who are you? What, you know, religiously speaking, we like to be known in church yes. places. Yes. Yes. I always try to teach and even privately say to people, know you that, you know, you're already known in heaven. You gotta be known in hell. Because it's hell, because it's hell that's gonna be what? Bringing the warfare. You know what I'm saying? The warfare. Even today, even today, before we get into this, even today, um, I got a, I got a call, you know, to come help because she lives a mile off the street from me. First thing I know, just just in case there's some religious antenna, I text my wife and said, you know, they, she knew I, she knew where I was going. Okay. Right. And so we got over there. Got over there. And my air conditioner, I was sitting in the, uh, in the car in front of the uh, house. Yeah. Air conditioner stopped. <laughs> Came to my mind, opened up the hood. I opened up the hood and the uh, serpentine belt was going off. Yeah. It was breaking. Then I tried to figure out what to do and I called my son-in-law to come over. And then she couldn't get a key in the car. In the ignition, I said, oh, the warfare started. Yeah. Already. Already. But saints of God, it's, it's really important to be known in hell. And, and hell, you know, hell has been put on order. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Just, just for a quick moment, I'm not, I'm not preaching, I'm not teaching. You know, hopefully nobody's trying to evaluate me, you know. No, no, no. You know, who is he? You know, but um, look at Titus. Look at the first chapter of Titus. First chapter of Titus. We want to lay hands on the woman of God. Amen. We thank the Lord. Now, I've never met your brother. Five sisters. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Alright. One of the things that you see, one of the things about today is it's a little bit on the casual side, and yet it's also sacred. Yes. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yes. You know, and usually when we go to come to those um installations and everything, you know, everything's kind of pretty stiff and yes. stuff like that, you know. And we're really celebrating. We're, we're, we're just celebrating, amen, what the Lord is doing, amen, in her behalf. So in, in, in Titus, in Titus, um, just a few verses, I'm going to just say some words, and um, we're going to uh, anoint you. All right, Titus, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, servant of God, and apostle of Jesus Christ. It's amazing, uh, Tanya, that we grew up in the we grew up in the apostolic church yes, that did not believe in apostles. No, they did not. They did don't, not. don't get me started. Amen. <laughs> According to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after uh, godliness in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but it hath in due times manifested His word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So this is the verse that this is the verse that I want to uh, these two verses four and five. To Titus. So Paul, an apostle, is talking to Titus. And he says, To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, son or daughter, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Okay. What's the assignment? Titus got an assignment. To Titus, my own, um, um, for this cause left I thee in Crete, 
I left you in Crete. We had a conversation. There was a discussion, a conversation. I left you in Crete because, amen, there was purpose on your life. Yeah. And yeah. you had an assignment. This is your assignment. Yeah. In Crete. Now, anybody want to know anything about Crete? I'm not. Crete is like Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, many of the old, many of the older fathers, mm -hmm. you know, like the Gary Washingtons and stuff right, like that. Right. Many of the older fathers even told us young men that Cleveland was a graveyard for preachers. Mm -hmm. um, 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 let me just share. Let me, let me you, amen. Thank the Lord, amen. If the Lord has something, you know, to say prophetically, whatever, you know, the, the, you know, the yeah. Holy Spirit will do that. Cleveland is a hard Cleveland is a hard place yes, to establish ministries. Yes, and, uh, and some of you don't believe it, but you have to you have to know you have to know the history of Cleveland from Azusa Street. Many people many people believe that the word church is the first mega church in Cleveland. Not so. The first mega church in Cleveland was in the twenties. It was in the 20s, amen, by an apostolic, amen, uh, pastor that I can't think of his name right now. He's, he's, I'm missing it. And he started, amen, uh, 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 a church. And he was so anointed and, and so on and so forth, amen, that in one service, amen, he said seven people are going to get saved, seven people are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost, be, you know, speaking in tongues, etc. Six of them got filled, amen, in the service. One got, amen, filled on the train. And something happened, amen, to the man, amen. And then we never, then we didn't see for years big ministries, you know, a lot of people ministries here. And uh, um, it became known if you talk to people out outside of this uh, city, whatever, they'll tell you that Cleveland is a hard place. Crete was a hard island. It was a difficult island, and Titus was left there. I'm really speaking. I'm really speaking to you and everybody else. Okay, and um, it says, "Okay, why? Why? What is the assignment that you should set in order?" Okay, uh, the apostle told Titus, "Go to Crete and set those things in order that are wanting, that need to be set in order, and uh, and ordain elders." In every city as I had appointed me, I, we had a private discussion, ordained elders. Now, a lot of times, amen, saints, according to the uh, movement that we're in, whether we're Baptist or Church of God, Christ, or whatever, excuse the expression, religious flavor we are, amen, they have a, a method of saying, you know, you're an evangelist or you're, right. you know, if you're, if some people don't believe in women preachers or whatever, yeah, they, and they become missionaries. Or something like that. Never call them a preacher or whatever. You know, when I saw an evangelist, you know, on you, uh, I leave. I'm a, I'm a, I, maybe I'll leave you alone. Amen. Listen. But when I saw evangelists on you, uh -huh. matter of fact, what I really saw is I saw evangelists on Mama, yeah. and I saw evangelists on you. But understand, Amen. In the way we were raised, yeah. Amen. Every woman, every lady that was called to preach yeah. was either a minister or an evangelist. Even if you were, even if you were a prophet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what she is. Okay. Yeah. You know, and so we look. So they label. They label according to the religious tradition. That's right. And one of the things that happened even here in Titus is the apostle told what Titus to go to Crete and ordain elders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now elders and then elders in most of our churches are not pastors or whatever, but what he was saying to them, ordained elders, because every pastor is an elder. Yes. Biblically speaking, amen. Yes. So what we have, amen, here today, mm -hmm. is we have an elder. Yes. Amen, hallelujah. A prophetic, yes. uh, yes. a prophetic pastoral elder. Y'all yes. yes. catch what I'm trying to say. Yes. When we say, a lot of times in service, when we say an elder, well, maybe it's just somebody that has an assignment to clean the church or, you know, take care of hospitalization or something like that. But an, an, an elder can be what? A female. Yes. Amen, somebody. Right. So we have a prophetic pastoral elder, amen, here today. And what 
happens here, this is the part I want to release to you, is, amen, Titus had an apostolic release. Yes. Yeah, come on. If I, if, I, if, I, if I get a little excited, then I'll go to, go to do that other stuff, preaching. So. Oh, yeah. But there's an apostolic release. Oh, yeah. It's right there in yeah. Titus 1. Right. Yeah, right, right. He has an apostolic yeah. release. Amen. What happened, amen, is the Lord Jesus, yeah. amen, by Holy Spirit, amen, talked to what? Paul. Paul talked to Titus. Titus went to Crete and what? He said, go and establish what elders in every city, wherever you go. And so what's happening, man, in this, uh, what's happening, man, uh, is, I thought, I thought you were going to get up and talk about how you came over to our house and sat there and talked to uh, my wife and I. And how we sat, did you? Maybe. And, and how, how we sat and just listened to you for an hour. No, it was about four hours. <laughs> Amen. And you just and you just and you just you just talked and prophesied and ministered to yourself. Because a lot of times, amen, it takes what a lot of times in counseling, you just gotta listen. Just let people let people pour out. And so uh, I thank the Lord, Amen, today for this um, connection, for this release. This is a launch, not an installation, according to our understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. She's going to need your support. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe your support cannot be physical. Maybe your support can be what? Financial. Yeah. And most of all, your support has to be what? On your knees. Yeah. In prayer. You got to pray. You got to help her pray. You got to help her pray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, God is in this. Oh, yeah. This is God. And I shared with her earlier, I shared with her earlier today. I thought maybe I shouldn't say this. I said this, I said, I said, you know, when we were coming over, my son-in-law back there, you know, over there to help her bring stuff here. I said, you know, Jesus went to Nazareth and uh, his family did not what? Receive him, you know, in, you know, in that way. And he said, you know, uh, you know, prophet is not without honor in his own country. Uh, to do not, do not, let me just be, do not depend on family. Amen. Hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, family. Yeah. Hold it. You got to depend on God. Yeah. Yes, there is still what a dependence on family, but not the ultimate dependence. Amen. Because family, amen, family of people, family is people. With your blood in them. That's right. And they're no different than people without your blood in them. Right. Come on, get somebody. Yeah. They'll, they'll, hurt, they'll hurt you, fail you. Yeah. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. So this is the launch. Yeah. And I thank God, amen, that we're part of it. Yes. So, oh my God, we want you to go forth yeah. and do what God told you to. Yeah. Amen. And so, Prophet, would you stand? Would you stand? And I want uh, uh, Elizabeth come and all the elders, amen, come. Um, you're, free, you're free to come. Whoever, whoever, if I don't call your name, you're free to come. We'll lay hands. We'll lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus. Um, before, before I lay hands on you, I want to share, want to share this. And it might sound a little strange, the way it comes out. The reason, the reason why we don't like funerals is because there's too many people that die without fully, without fulfilling their purpose. They, they, they die full. Somebody say they die full. I believe you're going to be one, amen, that's going to die empty. And as I shared in Kentucky the other night, you're not going to die, you're just going to sleep. And so, so this, this, is for, this is for this house, this is for anybody in this house to receive this. What makes the difference for Debbie Godwin today is Debbie Godwin is pursuing her assignment. 
the purpose of God. She could have just been there in Cleveland Heights, because I lived in Cleveland Heights for 13 years old. She could have lived, she could have just went to work at Cleveland Heights and just pursued, amen, um, just her provision. You know, money, how to live, whatever. But she's chosen, amen, to pursue what? Your assignment. That's why, amen, hallelujah, the availability of finances is going to be for you. Because you put assignment first. And for everybody, for everybody that will put assignment first, God will always provide for his assignment. I want to lay hands on you, amen, hallelujah. Woman, God, while you were talking about money, while you were talking about having the money, I saw that hey, money's just going to be a, money's just going to be available, yes. and what it's going to be available through even is going to be available through through people. Yes. I even since right, I even since right now, and, and y'all can call me crazy or nothing like that. But there's a there's a woman even I think named Sales. Is there somebody here named Sales? Sales. Yeah, yeah. Say Sales. Sales. I know, I know, I know who I, I know who I'm talking. There's, there's a woman of God here named Sales, amen, that I just saw, amen, money coming to you. Come on, amen. Now, when the woman got listen, I don't know what I don't know what that means, amen, but th because what God's what God's going to be doing is God's going to be touching a lot of people that are close to you, amen, that will what, have no problem releasing to you. You hear what I'm saying? Oh God, hallelujah. I just feel the prophetic, amen. Uh, uh, can you feel that, man of God? Can you feel that? Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. It's like, it's like, it's like in the, it's in the air. There, there are, there are some people, there are some people, woman of God, there are some people, amen, that have it, that won't give it to you. They have it, they won't release it to you. Don't, amen, be distracted by them, because God's sending new people in your life, amen, that will support you and help you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I know I know I know information, but I also know inspiration. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a blessing. Yeah. And there's amen. Yeah. Yeah, there's a blessing. Yeah. And there's a promotion, yeah. amen, somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Coming for you, woman of God. In the name of Jesus. It's called the desire of your heart. Yeah. It's called the desire of your heart. Yeah. Lord have mercy. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I was, I, I, we, we want to anoint you. We want to anoint you. Hallelujah. Liberia, Liberia has been targeted. You know, you know, I've been, um, um, you know, I've been trying to get to Liberia for a few years. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord's released it. Amen. He's released it in my spirit just this week. Amen. Just this week. Amen. To go. Amen. Hallelujah. My son's at home. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to help. Amen. Finance. You're going to be coming there. There's a team. Come on, raise your hand, Denise. There's a team coming. Amen. Hallelujah. To what? To Liberia. Hallelujah. That international aspect. Man of God, what, what, what's the Lord saying? What's the Lord saying for you? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. If I was back in the old, if I was back in the old church, I would have to follow a one, ABC one two three, yeah. and we would annoy and then you know anybody before we before we lay hands. Amen. Anybody have something to share? Amen. Yes. 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 I praise God for what He's doing. Yeah, I praise God. Yeah. Griffin, and uh, when God called me, I didn't even know. But God called me to go back to my home in my field to be to, to educate children over there. They know how he was gonna do it. But God did it supernaturally. And we have a school going now, and wow. they have a school in the village, they have a church in the village, wow. it was a Muslim village, but God supernaturally opened the door yes. and they gave us some land, we have a church going, we have a school going, and we have about 11 staff members. Wow. We don't know where the money coming from, us, right. come from, but the teachers are getting paid and they come. Amen. And the minister of our community, our preparer of the bridge. Yes. yes. We need to go to the country. Yes. yes. We need to protect yes. people to not every yes. country. Yes. Liberia needs you. 
and God will open the door. He will make a way. And the bishop said, it will be no problem. Yeah. Money will not be an issue. I have a testimony to that. Amen. Please share with something with you. Just this week, yeah. I got into a tough situation. I began to talk to God. Yeah. I said, God, what you said. Yeah. This is what you said. Yeah. You said if you gave, oh, if you if you if you saw, if you paid a tithe, yeah. God, I need a bond. I need yeah. help. Yeah. What can I do? And I said, Lord, who can I call? Yeah. And I got off the phone. Yeah. And it was in my hour. Yeah. And my sister called. Yeah. She said, You miss the phone? I said, Yeah. She said, I had a dream about you last night. Mm -hmm. And we were giving you money. Wow. And she said, Meet me at dinner. Wow. And the money you need, we're going to give it to you. Wow. Just this one yeah. So, God called you, He was the wise I just wanted to um, say to the Apostle Griffin about Sharice. She's like really a Sharice, I want to publicly thank you for it. Um, I thank God, but you know what? God uses people. Yes, sir. You have truly been blessed. I'm just going to prophet for Sharice. Thank you. And I love her. Patricia. That's my thing. That's my thing. But um, Debbie truly is a person that wants to share me. I've been without work eight months. And a lot of y'all don't know besides her and Brett. I was on the verge of losing everything. Everything time I would call Debbie. Debbie didn't just talk to me. She would give to me. And then she would talk to me. She said, Tommy, God has never failed you. He had, I mean, God has brought me out of things that most people don't escape. I'm a registered nurse. Yes. Who do you know that don't find it? Just, Debbie kept telling me, it's something that God wants out of you. And as soon as I gave up that one thing, uh, doors began to open. Yes. And I called Debbie, and I'm not ashamed to say it. My husband is a working man. He worked hard. Yes. But the load was too heavy for him to pass and I was like, Lord, Lord, I need my house. I don't want to stay with nobody. God knows how I am. I said, I need my cars. I said, I need everything. I have ate every day. I have not had one utility shut off. My mortgage, they took it and modified it and threw all of the payment in the back because I kept praying. Uh, and I wasn't, I'm not going to say that I wasn't worried. Yes. And there was periods where I was weak. Yes. But as soon as I let go, God blessed me with a job. Yes. I'm not going to tell anybody where it's at yet yes. or when I'm going to start. Yes. But I'll be an ER nurse. And I want to thank you, Debbie, for, Debbie don't like glory for anything. Yes. Does she do? But she always said, well, God uses people. God has used you, Debbie, to feed my family, yeah, come on. To pay my bills. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You all right, baby? I never yeah. all right. have ever felt hurt or talked about or just, she just gave. Yeah. And I never had to ask her. She would just, you know, real saints, yeah. real saints, they see the need. They see it. See, my godmother used to often say, we grew up under apostle, no strict holiness. And they would say, people can see you in your sin, but they can't see when you need a loaf of bread. A loaf of bread. She said, give the people what they need and they can praise God better. And there was many times, I got used to baloney, but I ain't. And I have not missed a beat. All my bills was paid. Debbie would just call me, Tanya, come over here, I got a check. And my husband is a very prideful man. He's prideful. And he needs to stop, but, you know, God got a way to obey you. But she would just call me and say, come and get this. My mother, my friends, my niece back there, they would just, it was just money coming. And I was never saying nothing to anybody. But God is Jehovah Jireh, and he provided for me and my family. And I know, Debbie, you're going to be the person that she don't mind it. Like, it, 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 it's like, when I try to thank her, she don't want it. But I thank you, Debbie, yeah. 
but he eating a call. Now I got to do mine. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm still running, but <laughs> that's it. I, I see. While you're talking, yeah. Amen. Because she's stepping out, yeah. I see a, I, I see like a cord, right. yeah. an invisible cord. Yeah, exactly. Right. And what it's doing, Amen, yeah. is pulling you out yeah. because you have assignment, woman of God. There's an assignment on your life. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can't be comfortable, Amen, sitting. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's an assignment, Amen. There's a mantle on your life. But I think I told you that a couple years ago. <laughs> And I see it so visibly, amen, tonight, in the name of Jesus. Let us anoint, let us anoint her. Let us anoint her. Let's anoint her. Before we anoint, can I? Yes. yes. And, and as he was speaking to you, what I heard the Lord say is as she walks into her ministry, he's going to start pulling you even the more. I, I see your mantle getting heavier on you to the point where you can't run from it anymore. I see the mantle getting weighty on you because she answered her call. It's almost like she's pulling you up in the spirit. And I even see God opening up your ears to hear more clearly and your eyes to see more, more, more precisely. And God says open up your mouth because just like your sister, this job that you're going to is an assignment. And I hear God saying that as you walk in this new assignment that he's giving you, and you're going to see this job is more than just a job. It's an assignment. And as you speak out of your mouth, God is going to honor the words that come out of your mouth. I even see the healing ministry released in your life in Jesus' name. You're a registered nurse, but God said there's a healing ministry that you must walk in. The healing mantle is going to weigh heavy on you in the ER. In the ER. It's going to rest on you heavy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hall
And we got to be practical too. Yes. Right? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Women, women, God, I want to just surround them. Just surround them. Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't want, amen, hallelujah, any molestation, yes. amen, to touch these women of God. Yes. Amen. Any perversion to touch these women of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if there's a man, amen, assigned to your life, amen, to stay in your life, amen, he's going to be God's man. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of y'all got, uh, somebody got some secret boyfriends. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Is that right? Yes. I don't even know you. Yeah. My God, hallelujah. Uh -huh. Amen. You know, sometimes when you have to see, sometimes when you have to see them, is that what you try to keep mom and daddy from going? Yeah. Right? Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. But amen. I'm just, let's, let's pray. You hold your hold hands. Let's, let, lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, bless these women of God. Oh God, consecrate them. Oh God, we separate them unto Yes. Unto thee, Lord, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for them. In the name of Jesus, let them walk, amen, in purity and sanctification yes. and holiness, amen, biblical holiness. Yes. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak to them. Open up re revelatory, amen, truths, amen, dreams, yes. amen, impart, amen, yourself, amen. Make yourself known to them. We pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord God, if there is, amen, hallelujah, any secret, amen, admirers, yes. amen, that you've not sent yes. in the name of Jesus, I speak yes. to them right now yes. that they got to go yes. in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. they got to be released. they yes. got to go yes. because they're not assigned to your life yes. in Jesus' name. We give you praise. I'm going to God bless you. Amen. Amen. Go back and see. Why are you praying me, girl? Anoint this woman of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Anoint this woman of God. Yes. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Woman of God, you've been, you've been, you've been called and separated in the last days. This is the end time issue because of the time. Anybody with common sense knows because of the time is end time. Right, right. But more than that, it's the end time. Yes. It is end time because God has sent Amen, hallelujah. We're here and we support you. Amen, we're not, we're not here to replace God in your life. Because I have that conversation with you every day, amen. I'm a man, amen, I'm, I'm prone to fail. Everybody around you is prone to fail. Because we're men and women. We're actually all men, just some men with whom. Amen, hallelujah. But we thank God, amen, for you, amen, today. And amen, hallelujah. Heaven has already launched you. Amen. We're here to support you. Yes. And we want to lay hands on you. Amen. Amen. Would you, would you say to God? So, Father God, I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, my Father, God. Thank you for this, for the repairs of the bridge, for this beautiful, for God, international, for God, this day, for the loss, for God, for the notification, oh God, hallelujah. Amen. In this earth, oh God, publicly, oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for the host of angels who are assigned. Amen. To your life. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus. A host of angels, amen, have been given charge, amen, over you and your ministry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. At your word, hallelujah. At your word, amen, they will move. At your word, hallelujah. They will overact, act, oh God, because they move by faith in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that son, Lord God. Hallelujah. We call him forth, Lord God, into ministry. Oh God, that grandchild, Lord God. Hallelujah. Work it out, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh God, we give you praise out of glory. And we thank you, Lord God, for the anointing oil, for the mantle upon your life. In Jesus' name, oh God, we thank you, Father. Amen. For your love, oh God, and how you prepare this woman, God, for this end time. Now, in Jesus' name, we give you praise out of glory. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Stand up on your feet, everybody. Come on, embrace him and clap your hands. Thank God. Amen. Come on up here and just uh, embrace her. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell her you love her. Amen. Don't, don't lie. Amen. Hallelujah. Come up. 
and share with her. Amen. Okay? I got pasta salad. I have fruit salad. 
We got cheese tray. We got plenty of food. So please don't leave it. You gotta leave. Take something with you, please. Thank you. And we, uh, boss, you want to dismiss this? No. What I want to yes, yes, I do. Okay. And what I want to say to you is, you as you watch, and if you have a desire even to uh, put on any kind of uh, services on the oh, and then you come in here and then hold me. All right. And, and, and it's free. Thank you. Woo! Because, 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 because we see you as an extension of us. A part of us. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you never you charge family. Right. right. And just to let you all know, the Bible class officially starts and services will start as of June 15th. And I'll be sending out flyers. I want you all who are already not members of churches. Amen. We're not trying to take nobody's members. <laughs> who are people that are... We got phones now. Are so silly? What that got to do with it? Here's anyway, that's my brother. Right, right. But I, we're gonna we're gonna do our, our begin our first service on uh, June the fifteenth at seven o'clock. We're gonna do about an hour to hour and a half. So we get you in and get you out. Not that we're rushing God, but we just wanna let you know that we're starting. I'll be putting out things on Facebook and sending out flyers to let you all know about the time and location. All right, and I want to tell you, Jackie. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I told her she only had to come and stay about 20 minutes to a half hour, and she stayed the whole service. So that was a blessing. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this uh, day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for woman God and then stepping out in faith. We ask, oh God, that you would now bless each and every one of God in this place today. And let them go forth and walk in your purpose. Oh God, bring them back, oh God, to their several home place of uh, uh, abode. They've been protected, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen and God bless you. Amen. 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 amen.